Hello Saints, I hope that you are well and uh, that you've had a good week. I pray that God is, um, you know, blessing you and keeping you. I know that, um, you know, I've heard of, you know, that uh, a number of us have not been too good, but um, it's just so wonderful that we've been able to pray together and, um, you know, be an encouragement to each other. And I pray that God will continue to bless you and those of us who are not well, that God will restore you to health. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and mercies towards us. We thank you so much for this beautiful day and for life, dear Father. We thank you most of all that you are with us and that you're taking this wonderful journey with us. Lord, we can't thank you enough for this. And I pray that once again, as we meditate upon your words, that you will speak to our hearts, open our eyes, allow your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. We ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, we're back again in John chapter 14, and I'm reading uh, verses 1 to 6. Yes, let's do that. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, um, you know, we've been spending time considering Genesis 1 and 2 in a way that it's maybe unfamiliar to us, but it's one that speaks truth. It tells us of what it was like at the beginning and how the ancient Near East uh, mindset would have actually understood that text. And, um, you know, it's really benefited me and I pray that it's benefited you. Um, so at this time, we're going to continue and I'm going to share a screen with you once again. There we go. That's the one I want to share. And yes, and this is the way we do it. Lovely. So once again, we've got truth and we're looking at Eden and it's Genesis 1 and 2 that we have been considering. Let's say this together, shall we? Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. One more time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Never, ever forget it. I'm sure that this reality was something that, that kept um, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah when they were in Babylonian captivity. You know, even though uh, Pharaoh was there and they were told all kinds of things, they always kept that at the front of their minds and it informed all that they did and they determined to remain faithful because of that. Yeah, this is the reality. Now, um, one of the things that we haven't really touched on this week, we've, we've touched on the earth and, and um, Eden and, you know, the central um, place of worship and it being a place of worship. Um, and it's nice for us actually to consider the author of, um, of this text. Uh, Moses is actually the author of the first five books of the Bible. So that's um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And he's also attributed with um, writing the book of Job. Um, and it will do us well, because of what we've been considering this week, to, to consider the contribution that God made through him in inspiring him. So he was born um, to son of Am, Am, Amram and Jochebed of the tribe of Levi. And he was born in Egypt during the period in which Pharaoh had ordered that all um, the um, newborn males, Hebrew children, be cast into the Nile. And he's rescued, you know, miraculously. It's amazing how God works this out, you know. Uh, the very people that, you know, place that the, the decree was issued from is a very place where um, uh, Moses is um, kept safe and, and reared as a prince. Only God. <laughs> <laughs> things like that yes um and and so he lived 
in the splendor of that Egyptian court um, as an adopted son and grew up into manhood there. So he spent his formative years there. And I'm sure though his mom would have, um, you know, trained him before he left um, her um, care to go and be adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, you know, she would have taught him well about his his roots yeah and um, his culture and, and his identity as a Hebrew but nevertheless whilst he was there as a prince he was brought up as a prince and he was educated as a prince and this is really comes to bear when you study those first five books of the bible i mean throughout the whole bible god inspires greatly um but one of the the, the, the pieces the literary pieces of art is the speech of judah to joseph when um you know benjamin was going to have to remain a slave and that speech is really quite powerful and it really helps us to see judah as you know worthy of of having the messiah come through his line so so god uses this amazing um vessel of his Moses and he actually equips him um, you know our God is able to bring a lot of good out of um, desperate and tragic situations you can imagine he 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 was destined to to to, to die you know victim pray victim um, for victim to um, this decree that um, Pharaoh has made but yet God brings it out and works it out that he is saved brought up within the palace grounds as a prince learns all that he needs to learn because God was saying you know what I'm going to use you as my vessel to um to free my people and they will be emancipated and um you know what uh, but I'm going to work on you too I'm going to let you have 40 years in this wilderness so you will know what it is means to trust me and this man of God during those 40 years was humbled was shaped and was able to go back as an amazing vessel to be used of God um, so saints you know what never complain <laughs> you know when we're going through hardships when we're going through struggles God is actually refining us and he's causing us to be more dependent on him and I really praise him for that and so this man is used mightily so when he's considering when he's writing the account of the um, creation He's attributing to God's, uh, the sovereign Lord, everything that is due him. He is not holding back. And he wants us to know that, hey, this creation was to worship uh, God and that was the setup and that's you know what he was accustomed to when it you know when, when it came to these these courts that 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 regard that high regard would be um, expressed towards the sovereign and and it's just a beautiful thing that he attributes this to God so cultural context is very very important if we didn't go there we could read a lot into the text but this is one of the things when I was at New Bowl that we were taught to be very careful of that because you can end up with what we call isogesis where you bring to the text um, yes it, it might be applicable in some ways but you can actually read into it sometimes what's not there yeah um and you know it's always good to have application but it must come from a place of of listen this is this is what the text would have meant to the people of that time and this is how it translates to us yeah and you can't go wrong with that yes and so he fled into the wilderness and um you know meets uh, jethro and is you know becomes a uh, jethro's um son-in-law because he marries Zipporah. And so these are the wonderful things. Whenever we're looking into the word of God, it is so rich. It is so wonderful. Um, you know, don't be in a rush when you're studying the word of God. Connect the dots. And I, I'm going to continue here um, because, you know, this whole thing of, 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 
of the creation being um, you know this this temple um, that's a new idea to a number of us um, it first came to me a, a few years back when um, one of my, I, I bumped into one of my one of the lecturers from New Build and we were having a really good um, discussion and I realized maybe I've been away too long <laughs> so, so there were some things we were getting very excited about you know and this was one of them um, and you know when you think about it if that was such a pivotal part of 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 eden of of the creation then it would be reflected in 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 the earth restored and i wanted to take a few moments for us to actually look um at revelation chapter 21 verses 22 to 27 um, because we will see that correlation i wish i could do it with actually the temples that were made but it's going to take us too long saints i'm sorry but that's something that you can do yes and um, there is a wonderful correlation between that and um this is what has been exciting a lot of scholars these last number of years um and so this, let's, let's read this one together. Revelation 21, verses 22 to 27. It says, I did not see a temple in the city. Um, speaking of the New Jerusalem, this says, um, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp uh, the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it on no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there the glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it nothing impure will ever enter it nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the lamb's book of life and you know when you look at the um the description of the new jerusalem again that cube yes is there that cube shape yes and um you know that 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 whole connotation of it being a most holy place you know so so it's it's um it this this is mind-blowing it really is but um god will always have his word there to, to and and his spirit to lead us into all truth and i would really encourage you to continue to study and to dig deep right so here we say once again I'm, I'm saying the same thing here moses attributes to god glory and honor which he is due but without the insight of the ancient near east we would miss it yes we would enjoy um reading into the new days and everything but we could miss the whole idea and we have for a number of years that this was actually all about worship and praise that harmony that that love that everything that trust it was it, it's, a, it's quite amazing and um you know we are going to um consider next week humanity and and we're not going to rush through that because it is so deep and so amazing that um the lord has got so much to bless us with um so let's end with this part when this world is restored it will be um our great honor and privilege to worship god as sovereign isn't that going to be amazing and so we're doing that from now we're, we're, we're going to continue doing that that's why we live that's why we you know we do what we do to bring honor and praise to god and so god bless you and um, we look forward to continuing our study together shortly let us pray dear father we thank you so much for this opportunity to study your holy words oh it is so sweet it is so so sweet and when we consider what this world was like and what you know the earth restored will be like so then the, we don't need any light there Lord, because you are the light the lamb is the light and we're just looking forward to it so much and so i pray lord that you will ever keep these things before us accept our heartfelt praise forgive us wherein we fail you and um your lord restore us into that image your image and shine upon us and keep us now and forevermore i pray amen so be that sir attacking me almost <laughs> well god bless you saints i i pray that you um have a wonderful weekend you take care now